How's it going guys? It's Joe. Welcome to the channel. Today I'm very excited to show you guys some footage that I've, I've been able to get of the Mandalorian and Grief Kaga in action with the other bounty hunters in Squad Arena. So just to give you a brief overview, I'm going to be using this team here on the screen guys. And I've been playing around with the three leaderships here of Bosk, Django and the Mandalorian just to see which is the most effective and which I'm going to be using in my GAC in the future. So firstly, I want to thank you so much Raccoon for allowing me to be able to utilize this footage today and letting me use this team against your Geonosians and Night Sisters. So let's get right into the video guys. So the first one is against Geonosians and I'm going to be using my Bosk leadership here. So to begin with guys, the Bosk leadership makes your bounty hunter team so much more survivable with max protection, tenacity and defense. However, the contract only limits you to attacking the weakest enemy 10 times, which is a bit troublesome if you're stuck behind a, a taunting tank. So a good example of that would be uh, the Geo Brute here in this particular lineup as I was stuck behind that taunt for a fair bit. Now I'm not able to quickly get to my payout because of that, so I've had to kind of maneuver around this taunt and now the weakest enemy has become the spy. So that's another troublesome thing, although I believe that I can get past these Geonosians fairly decently, uh, regardless of getting payouts. I still wanted to test it out and see how quickly I can get to Mandalorian's um, Annihilate ability. So with the Mandos basic there, we're finally able to get our payout. And here's another thing with Grief Kaga, his ability Bring Them In Cold is essentially like Illuminated Destiny from BB-8 as once you're able to defeat an enemy with it everyone gets all these amazing buffs that you get and once you've got those buffs that critical chance up or critical damage up then Mando can finally use that Annihilate ability and since we don't want to drop our friend here we're gonna retreat here and try and get some more refreshes going as we want to keep practicing and try the different leaderships that we've got with the Bounty Hunter squads. So in the second part of the video, I want to show you the Django leadership here. As Django's leadership is pretty awesome as well. So as you can see here guys, it increases speed by 30. Enemies have negative 20% potency and whenever you've got burning out, none of the opposing team can gain turn meter which is absolutely amazing the other thing about this uh, contract is you can literally hit anyone that is debuffed and that counts as points towards that contract so i'm able to drop the brute there behind and i'm just trying to get my payout as soon as i possibly can and as you can see, I quickly get to that payout and I quickly make easy work of the opposing team here. However, these guys have uh, thrown out a bunch of exposers out on the field and unfortunately I lose Boba, but I'm able to get to that Annihilate there and drop Geo Brood Alpha. In the next bit of video here guys, I just want to show you a differential and comparison in the leadership of these bounty hunters as the Mandalorian's leadership is another interesting one. All scoundrel allies have plus 20 speed, plus 35% tenacity and plus 30% critical chance. And the other thing about this leadership is 
the contract allows for you to gain points towards the payout as long as you're landing critical hits. So you've got to hit your opponent 20 times with critical hits and that's anyone on the field. So the idea here is it doesn't matter if you're stuck behind a taunt, you're still going to be going towards your payout. And once you're on your payout, you gain 20% offense and health steal, and obviously you get Mando's Annihilate, which makes this leadership a very viable lead leadership in that sense. Although it looks like we're making real quick work of this Geonosian team here. Even before we're able to get to this Annihilate, we've already dropped three of the Geos. So although they are G12 Geos, I still feel strongly that this team will work against um, relic up Geos as well. In the next bit of video guys, we want to go against the Night Sisters here and the trouble is that Night Sister Zombie has a pre-taunt so we're going to utilize our own taunt here and then throw out those burns from Django and provided that we're getting critical hits we're going to be getting our payout fairly shortly. I'm going to pass this on to Grief Kaga and hit Asajj Ventress here as I want him to take a turn and get Illuminated Destiny here. And I'm going to uh, knock out Asajj Ventress here as I know she can probably hit us with a Dispel and we're going to lose a lot of our um, buffs here. So still working towards our payout at the moment. We're going to use a basic on Talzin here, get our taunt back and we're going to cleanse off some of these plague stacks. And now we're going to use our mass assist onto Talzin there for our payout. And unfortunately, they've stunned the Mandalorian, so we're gonna have to wait to cycle around again to get that Annihilate out. And the good thing about using Bounty Hunters against Night Sisters is if you're able to use those Execute abilities onto them, they're not gonna be able to revive, which is pretty amazing. And we've got Annihilate here, or I should say Disintegrate. And I've got to say guys, this team is amaz not only amazing, but also really fun to play. The next leadership I'm going to be using is Bosk, as I found that having Bosk on the leadership slot allows for your team to be able to survive a ton of damage. So we're having the same problem here, we can't go for Night Sister Spirit, so we're going to use the Taunt. And once we get Django here, we're going to try and target them. Still stuck behind this taunt. Pass this on to Boba and get an assist. Boba's basic hits like a truck there and we're able to hit for 30k in one basic. And we're going to try and ability block a bunch of these guys. They've stunned Mando and Django for a bit there. And although this team is much more survivable, I found that it's much harder to get to the payout. And ultimately, the Mandalorian's leadership probably wins the payout battle as you can get to your payout really quickly. As long as you're, uh, you've modded your team for crit chance secondaries and things like that. His leadership already allows for an additional 30% crit chance so you've just got to bridge that with another 70% to allow them to crit as often as possible. So here we've got the payouts out and we've dropped a couple of these Night Sisters and we've got our Disintegrate. So this team is going to be amazing guys, there's going to be a ton of theory crafting behind this team and I'm sure there's going to be more 
opposing lineups that's going to fall to this Mandalorian team here. And I'm so happy that we're able to showcase this in Squad Arena today. So thanks again to our good friend Raccoon for letting us have this opportunity. So in the background here guys, I just wanted to show you the, the mods and stats. Bosk, I've got him pretty fast at 291 speed and pretty tanky at about 90k protection there. Django, I've got about 288 speed, so he's pretty fast as well and he hits like a truck at about 8k offense. And the Mandalorian here is about 286 speed as well, not very tanky. I must say, not much health there, but 9,000 offense is pretty awesome at Relic 4. So Boba Fett, I've modded him for optimal damage as well, but he's probably one of the softest characters in the bunch, regardless of Relics. At about 40k health and 40k protection. Grief Karga is always going to be behind Stealth, which is pretty awesome as he essentially is a support character, so that's where you want him to be. You don't want him to be swarm attacked or anything like that. So thank you guys for watching. Please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, I'll see you on the next one.